Especially when dealing with outside data, you'll often need to send or receive lists. Lists are exactly what they sound like, uh, consecutive pieces of data in one message from multiple sources. There's an object to create a list in PD as well. There's an object to parse or unpack a list in PD. To create a list, you would use pack, and then you would use the creation arguments for the list. So if the list consists of floats, you would type all Fs. So I'll give you an example. Let's say we create a series of floats. And remember that PD doesn't distinguish between floats and ints. Everything to it is floats. And so here I've got four distinct numbers. And so I'm going to pack them into a list. I'll use the print object to look at it in the PD window. And then we'll send a bang to all four of the numbers. Since I'm connecting them in right to left order, that's the order of the list. Remember, use trigger if you want to force that. Here I'm just remembering to connect in that order. So bang the list, go to the PD window, and there you see 46, 46.98, etc. Okay, so that's different than if I connected each of those messages to the print object. Then I would get them uh, consecutively and not as a single message. So what we can do is when we receive a list, we can then unpack uh, the list and send it out multiple outputs. So let's take the same numbers, but type them in a single message. So this would be, in effect, a list. Okay, so I'll use unpack and then give for the creation arguments the data type that's coming through. So float, 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 and float. And that'll create the, um, the right amount of outlets. All right, so now let me create a bunch of number atoms. And then connect them. And finally, a bang to send the list to unpack. And here, we're going to actually see the output in the window. So in this particular case, it's sent out left to right according to the order within the list. So to demonstrate how lists can be used effectively in PD, I'm going to use a program called Reactivision. Reactivision is part of a framework for identifying symbols uh, called fiducials in order to um, create tangible user interfaces. So I've got the Reactivision window open and I'll slide it into view and you'll see um, a thresholded image of myself and then I'm going to hold up uh, an image that uh, the Reactivision folks call an amoeba. Okay, so using a webcam on my computer I am identifying this symbol. You can see that there's a small uh, number 9 in the center of the symbol. And so this framework allows for symbols to be identified. And you can download this for free. Just Google Reactivision and you'll get their website. And you can also get their PD patch that we're going to be using. And so as the camera identifies these symbols, there are what are called Tuio messages sent out that have the ID of the symbol. They've got the X and Y position of the symbol in relation to the camera acceleration, and lots of other great data. So this is how a lot of people are building reactive tables and um, really interesting user interfaces. So now that you can see what Reactivision is seeing, I'll pause the movie and come back and we'll look at the data as it comes out in the Reactivision patch provided by the Reactivision folks. I've downloaded the software from the Pure Data website, the PD patch for the Reactivision framework. And I've modified the Tuio client help PD files so that we can see the kinds of lists that the Reactivision software is sending out. And then use route to 
route messages um, that are contained in a list and then unpack to get the data out of the list. So you can see I'll slide into view the Reactivision window and I'm using these little fiducials just as you've seen in previous movies and I'll slide it out of view and take a look at the main PD window and as I move this symbol across the camera you see all of these lists populating so essentially PD is receiving these lists of information and the lists are formatted in a very specific way taking a look at the first list there is an add object symbol and then a series of floats and then update object in a series of floats and all the way at the bottom there is a remove object so there are essentially three indexes if you will to each of these uh, lists add object update object and remove object so what we can do is we can go back to our patch and we can create a route message and say okay route those that start with add object and it is case sensitive to the first outlet remove object to the second outlet and update object to the third outlet and finally a fourth outlet will be created for those messages that do not match any of the three uh, route creation arguments so now I'll create a print object and if I, if I connect it to the first outlet, that's the add object route, I'll only get those messages that are with the add object index. So here I put a fiducial in view of the camera, and you see that now I'm only getting it when it has been added to the camera. Likewise, if I were to connect the remove object outlet, whenever the fiducial is removed, from sight of the camera, it will print because that's when that message is sent out. The one that we're going to use in order to unpack its data is the update object, which is the third outlet. It's the one that's got all the good information. So what we'll do is we will take a look at this data as it's sent out and then we're going to cheat. We're actually going to look at the original Tuio client help for some help on the kinds of data that's being sent out. And so now let's go to the window and I'll hold the fiducial up and you can see that this is constantly updating as the name update object would imply. And these lists contain lots of different floats but looking at them you can say okay well there's a pattern the first two numbers don't seem to change. Here, let me try it again. Okay, so now the first number changed, but the second number didn't. I'll try it again. And the first number changed, but the second number didn't. So you can see that there's something about the second number that's consistent. And when you're dealing with lists, you really do want to understand the pattern within the lists because you can then begin to use route to create a, a further routing of information within the list because essentially you're using um, the numbers that don't change as a kind of index. So let's go back. We will, for a moment, look at the actual Tuio demo file. And here, you can see that they've done the exact same thing that I've done. In fact, I just copied their information because it's nice and clean. And that they're unpacking further from these add, remove, and update object outlets. And that's what we're going to do. Now you can look up the documentation on the Reactivision framework to understand the data as it comes out, or I'll just tell it to you now, at least what we're going to use in this particular movie. So what we'll do is we will create unpack, and we'll give it five float arguments, because everything being spit out from the update object outlet comes out as a float. Then we'll create a bunch of number atoms, and the order of the data coming out in this list from this point, from after update object, is a counter that counts the number of times objects have been added to the table, the ID of the object that is in view of the camera, I'm sorry if I said table, that's originally what this is used for, the X of the object related to the camera, the Y of the object, 
and then the angle of the object or more meaningfully the rotation. I'll use comments to label these. So we'll say counter ID X Y and angle or rotation. So for a simple proof of concept to um, show how we can connect Reactive Vision to PD and then send notes out, and as well to see how we can effectively use lists, because that's the original intent of this tutorial. We're going to send information out from the X position of the object to FM8 and essentially create a glissando so that as X increases, the notes played increase, as X decreases, uh, the notes decrease. So let's create really quickly make note and I'll say it's 64 velocity and really short notes let's say 100 milliseconds long note out channel 1 and connect these two together and then create a simple test message let's say look, middle C is what we'll send out and of course let's make sure that PD is connected to a driver, which it isn't. So connected to the IAC driver, which I've set up in previous movies. Now let's test it. Okay, so we are getting connectivity to the FM8, which I think is a really good way to go. You want to cautiously test connectivity at different um, areas. So now since I'll hold this up to the camera again, if you look at the X, it's spitting out X position from 0 to 1, so we'll use a multiplier to get that to be from 0 to 100. So times 100, connect the outlet of that number atom into the multiplication, create another number atom so we can see it after the fact, the um, product, and then we'll get floats, but make note can accept floats. Okay, let me bring into view the object ID. Okay, so that just demonstrates a way in which we can use an actual existing platform uh, for computer vision, that's reactive vision here. And knowing that it spits out lists, how we can take those lists into pure data and then do something expressive with the data in the lists. Of course, your imagination only limits you as to what you would really do with this. Um, the React table is clearly the, the device that has been created using this particular um, platform, and it's a really expressive instrument, but as well, what would you do with these amoebas and the lists and the data coming out and how would you use it meaningfully? Well, of course, we'll see in future videos how we can take any kinds of data and begin to craft really expressive experiences using all of these great objects and visual programming.